All right, you know things are starting to get close to the end when we're working on crown molding. So crown molding, that's the trim that goes up here at the top and it covers up things like this. This little inconsistency right here. And let me tell you what this is. This is a factor of the concrete being higher. Um, well, not the concrete. I actually should say the concrete being lower right here. And this end panel, I wanted to make sure it was even and perfect with the bottom down here and clean, not up off the floor. So I brought it down, but that meant in order for these upper cabinets to be level across all of these um, tops here and tie into this cabinet here that's setting on the ground as slow as I could get it, this had to be just a little bit off, but it's no big deal because we're gonna cover it with some crown molding and you and I will be the only ones that know that there's this issue right here, which is not even an issue. It's just a factor of uh, not perfect floors. So kind of is what it is. Now, uh, crown molding, not that difficult, but it does get some people kind of scared. So what we're gonna do is gonna get some measurements. So this is two foot and this run here is a total of 68 and nine, 68 and nine sixteenths. I'm just gonna take a shim here. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw this out. We've got two foot. What I say, 68 and nine sixteenths. Yes, 68 and nine sixteenths. We've got a return here of one foot. More like one foot and a 32nd. So we're gonna go a heavy one foot. And then we've got this guy here that dies all the way over into the wall. 64, seven sixteenths. All right, so now that we have all of our dimensions, let's go ahead and cut them on the, the miter box, the miter saw, and we'll bring them out and see how we did. All right, so we've got our dimensions, we've got our pieces of crown molding. Now what I like to do is always, especially when you're coming down to the end of a job and uh, like this is a special order, I don't wanna mess it up. I like to start with my longest piece first. And by doing that, if I mess it up, I can hopefully use it on another piece or pieces and not have it as a total waste. So my largest piece is the 68 and 9 16 and that has two outside miters. Now it doesn't matter, it does not matter how many times I do crown molding, I always have to think about how to do it or remember what side is what, and I'm definitely going to just verify that my bevel is like I want it. Uh, I think I'm pretty darn could maybe lean it just a hair. Greg is putting some shutters in outside. And if you're wondering about the Tyvek back here with that RR logo, we're getting set up for chimney stone. So um, we're gonna have ourselves a nice place to cut. Even though we have the IQ power tool saw that is fairly dust free, it still has a little puff of dust every time uh, you enter into a rock or a fake rock look on the stone. So we're gonna just try and capture that, keep it from you know going throughout the building, but it's pretty cold out now, so we're gonna to try to uh, cut indoors. And if it doesn't work, if it seems like the dust is making its way out, then we'll stop. But this should just knock it all down and then we can just you know sweep up or open the door and clean everything out. So that's what's going on there. So I've got my first outside miter and I need a 68 and nine sixteenths. So what I like to do is I'll run my tape long, I'll pull it out past 68, and then I'm gonna line up this cut edge with one inch. And then I'm gonna come down here and instead of doing 68 and nine sixteenths, I'm gonna do 69 and nine sixteenths. So there's our potential first piece of crown molding. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I know this, this guy here is gonna be good to come out of it and go back to that wall. So what I'm gonna do is this is the one that was uh, one foot. Okay, so now we've got the first miter here. It looks like a nice clean cut. Whether or not it's accurate or not will be determined. So let's go ahead and go in there and we'll check. And if these are good, we'll start working our way around. I'll set this up here. And then we've got this guy. That's an inside and an outside corner. What in the world did you do oh god lord i got it backwards let's say what in the world i thought i really messed up for a second okay that's gonna that's gonna work probably just fine so here's what i'll say about crown molding the easiest and most simplest way is this is your piece of molding this is how it's going to sit up on the back of the cabinet, this being the cabinet, right? So it's gonna give you this nice crown molded look. Instead of cutting it from the side that you would think, which would be the face of it, flip it over, set it against your fence of your saw, just like you're looking at, you're looking at it from the top down, okay? So I'm like a bird's eye view of my crown molding, and here I wanna cut this miter on this outside corner, Imagine there's a cabinet right here, and this is the corner of the cabinet, and you want to wrap a piece of crown molding around it. This 45, if you nest it against your fence, and make sure, do you see how there's like a little, you got your bottom here, that is gonna be four, uh, 90 degrees. So uh, this is going to sit against the wall of your cabinet, just like that. So this is straight up and down, and the bottom is 90 degrees from that. So if you rest it on your table, nest it against your fence, so it's sitting right there, and put a 45 on your miter saw and cut straight down, imagining you're looking at it from top down, it's gonna give you the right angle. Let's go check it out. All right, so I got my piece cut, my piece is cut to go around this upper area. And what I'm gonna do is just set it up here above the doors, let the doors be my third hand. And what I'm gonna do is check my miter on this side, make sure it's right where I like it, okay? And then here's your trick, is just grab yourself some blue painter's tape and tape it right to the cabinet. And what that's gonna do is, it's just gonna hold it from sliding one way or the other. So it's just gonna rest up here. I don't have to worry about it moving. And then I can walk my way over and just double check to make sure that my other miter is good. Which it is because I checked measurements and double checked them. So I am good to install these crown moldings and I'll just start on one side and I'll work my way around. Also, I'm kind of sorry because I know it's kind of hard to show the content when I'm in the way, but I need to be able to see exactly where these miters are. I like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on there. I'm gonna use some Tight bond, quick and thick. 
I just stuck my hand right in the glue. All right, next day, and we're ready to sand off these plugs, see how we did with the grain matchup, and see how it cleans up. It looks pretty crappy right now, but I think it's gonna clean up just, just beautiful. And then the finisher can go ahead and get this uh, column finished. All right, we're gonna start off with some 80 grit. <laughs> at how quickly that all disappeared. That's pretty sweet. I'm gonna throw some 220 on there. Well, there we go. The plugs all sanded down. Yeah, you can see them because there is a circle, but once this gets finished matching these rails, uh, I think it's gonna look fine. And I'd rather have a couple plugs and know that my handrail is nice and sturdy than the alternative. Looks like I just barely missed the grain lineup. As the plug got shaved off or sanded down, the grain just moved ever so slightly. Oh well, pretty close. This is too easy, Greg. Yeah. Oh. Once you get it set up, it's like pop, pop, pop. Yeah. And it's so easy to set up, too. <laughs> this is a True Positions cabinet jig. And uh, for putting hardware on, I don't know if it gets any easier. I know you guys have heard me talk about using jigs anytime you can. and. Putting hardware on your cabinets is no exception. It's gonna make you a lot quicker and probably a lot better. What up? You gotta be kidding me. You need my help? I, I've been waiting all morning for you to ask me for help, dude. Let me uh, just finish this. Well, the time has finally come to install the Versetta stone on the inside chimney, and it's one of our last projects or really I should say it's the last big project inside on this interior, and I think it's gonna be the biggest statement. So that's why we saved it for last. Greg is back here, not right now, I don't know where he went. He's been putting on this uh, felt paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with cutting the first pieces down at the bottom that go to go, that have to go around that hearse stone. And I think once we get above that stone there, it should be fairly easy sailing. Obviously, we're gonna to have to be cutting about every piece. So we did set up a pretty cool little tent inside the garage where we're gonna hopefully be able to knock down all that dust, but still use our IQ power tool dustless saw. I wouldn't say it's dustless, but it reduces the dust. All right, so when starting the chimney here, I've gotta consider uh, the termination at the top of this guy here. So what is my spacing of my panel so that I don't have a little rip going on right here. And also up at the top where it transitions to the four foot section. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a small piece at the bottom that will basically be to the height of the stone here, and then start with fulls right on top of this guy here, which will give me a, a piece stopping right here. And then I can just barely cut out 
and have almost a full piece going across the whole top. And also, what will that do up there? What'd I say? Three inches or so? So, up to there, I'll, I'll be cutting off like three inches. So that's good, I can, yep. And it will also, they'll adhere better because they won't have that back leg. So that I can put them all the way up against and put some uh, sealant yep. or adhesive. Okay. We're gonna try something different here and instead of alternating the pattern, we're gonna run this whole face up just like this and then we're gonna bring the backside into it, hoping that since the focal point is from the front of the chimney, that it will reduce the, the visual of this joint. And we're just gonna try it. I'm gonna run it up about halfway. If I don't like it, I'll just take these pieces and run them on that side and stagger the joint just like normal. But I wanna at least try it. This is uh, Greg's idea, so if it fails, it's Totally on him if it succeeds. It was, it was all because of my quality craftsmanship. <laughs> no, man, you get to be a part of the team that wins. But you get all the, you get all the, but you get all the credit if you fail. It's your idea. This wasn't my idea. How should I take responsibility for your idea? Uh, I don't know, I got one piece out. <laughs> it's the start of something beautiful. Dixon Rural Fire Department just pulled in. Is there anything you won't try? What's that? I said, is there anything you won't try? Oh, oh, there's a lot of things I won't do. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good, how are you? Good. Gotta check it out. Well, and I was like, is this the place? And I was like, okay. So, you know, it's like to put eyes on it. So if somebody, something would happen. Then you know what's... rolling in here like, we thought it was a cabin. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much an open space, definitely. I sure would think a place like this just, you, it's going to be gone, isn't it? Probably. I mean, by the time you guys got here? They put an alarm in it, will be, yeah, 16 minutes. That's what it took? And I drove faster than the engine can because I'm in my chief's car and I can go 65, 70 miles an hour. There's no way they average that. I mean, if it happens in the middle of the night and somebody driving by on the way to work sees it, it'll be. Call the insurance man, I guess. Correct. Yeah. So, I guess the good thing is, is like, you know, specifically made sure like, okay, we don't need that. We're never out. We're not gonna be out here. Like don't install that. We know we don't, we don't want that because we don't want it running or we don't want it on, you know? <laughs> All right, well, cool. All righty. Since I'm getting really close to where I, I'm gonna have to cut over top of the, uh, the stone mantle here. I'm just gonna set a couple pieces on and uh, check my measurement. Eight and three eighths, eight and three eighths. Perfect. See how this one does. Could be a little long. I won't know until I cut the side piece here. But we're running perfectly level. And coming between the two, man, that is, that is absolutely amazing. We're good to go.
Now this is where it, it's gonna start getting fun because I gotta go up and down, in and out of the lift every time I, I gotta make a cut. But it sure beats going up and down a ladder. And I gotta be really cautious so I don't, I don't wanna drop anything. Now the important thing is as I get closer to the top, I wanna be the same dimension and I'm 44 so that's good. Hey Greg, can I get you some measurements to cut or? Eight and an eighth, man. Dang, dude, your cut was just something of, something that dreams are made of, Greg. You guys, I've got some mixed feelings because today, today should be really the last day here on site. So the chimney behind me still has to be finished. I should be able to get that done. I'm hoping by lunchtime. And then I've got a small punch list of things that I'm hoping I can have done by the end of today. Now, I do have to come back and install a couple shutters because they're super back ordered. And I've got an exterior aluminum handrail that is also back ordered for another few weeks probably. So I'm not done done, but there's nothing that's gonna stop my client from moving into this space and starting to use it after today. And I have mixed emotions because I have put so much, Greg and I have put, so much time and effort into this project that I just feel like I'm connected to it. I know you guys that have been following along this whole, I don't know, six, eight months, whatever it's been, you hopefully have a similar connection that I feel like I wanted this, this I wanted to get to this point for so long that now that it's here, now that I'm actually able to see it finish up, I have a little bit of maybe fear of a separation anxiety. I know that seems crazy, but I wish this was mine. I, I've put so much time and effort into it that I feel like it should be mine. And I know that's not the way it is. I know that my client has paid me to do this and that has been my job, but it's a weird feeling. I'm assuming as an artist, when you spend all that time making a painting and then when it sells in a gallery, you think, man, I, that's, that's a part of me. That's how I feel. And I'm not gonna get emotional because that's not I'm, not, I'm not emotional in a sense that I'm gonna cry about it or nothing. I'm just saying that as I came to my job site today, I thought to myself, today, today is like it. I'm gonna be done with this interior and I'm gonna clean all my stuff up and I'm gonna have to go on to the next job. Now I'm excited about that, but also I've got a little bit of anxiety about it. And that's crazy to me. I don't know that I've actually felt that because I've never spent this much time on a job site. Um, but anyway, with that being said, I've still got a job to do. We've got to finish this chimney up and we got to get this punch list done and we got to get this space ready for my client. So there you go, let's get into it. I'm out of, about out of sides. 33 and three quarters. Okay, that's my, what is that guy? That's just one I can use? Yeah. Okay, perfect. 33 and three quarters factory right. Glad I got Greg cutting now. It's a lot less up and down, up and down, up and down.
that is what we've been all waiting for. At least I know Greg and I have been waiting to finish up the chimney because that was the last major project that we knew we were gonna do here on this job. Still got a couple minor things. We're gonna go ahead and come back here probably in two or three weeks when the, the other supplies come in so we can wrap it up. But there's gonna be a full walkthrough of this building, I promise you. And uh, I think it's gonna be awesome. Right now, all you guys have seen is construction phase. But when it gets cleaned up, when it gets furnished, uh, it's gonna look totally different. And I think it's gonna be amazing. And if you are on the fence of whether or not a post frame could be utilized as a residence, I think that when this job is done, it will definitely uh, make you maybe go one way or the other. Maybe you won't like it and that's fine too, but I think it's gonna be pretty killer.